This force was to be hidden in a series of underground bunkers that were specially constructed across the south and east coast of England. There are around 60 bunkers per county, each housing a three to six man team. This is a typical replicated uh, entrance and exit uh, to and from an operational base as used by the auxiliary units of World War II from the end of um, 1940 onwards. Uh, the entrance was uh, a balanced trapdoor which contained six inches of earth and the weeds in it were allowed to and indeed encouraged to proliferate so that it helped to camouflage the trapdoor when it was eased down into position by a carefully contrived balancing mechanism. And now having come down the entrance shaft we've now entered the main chamber which was where six auxiliary units operational patrollers were intended to stay uh, during the duration of their active service behind enemy lines. The main chamber here con comprising elephant iron was very strong indeed and very durable and rust resistant. The idea was that the sappers came in and dug a deep hole uh, at the bottom of which was a floor creation either of concrete or usually of railway sleepers. On top of that could be positioned this ready-made slab section of elephant iron bolted together and an instant cover created. It then required a wall at one end to lead to an escape tunnel and it needed uh, a wall at this end where the shaft came down. Most of the hideaways, shall we call them, during the war were constructed as this one was been, but a number were utilised from existing suitable underground locations. For example, in Scotland there were caves which could be adapted. In Northumberland there were coal mines, old coal mines, which could be adapted. And in Devon and Cornwall there were the tin and copper mines which could be adapted. And the men to fight for their country below ground in this particular location uh, from these operational bases only expected to have a very short life expectancy. Either they would be relieved by counter-attack within, say, a fortnight, or they would be captured and undoubtedly executed as franc tireurs with no rights as prisoners of war or protection under the Geneva Convention. Once the balloon went up, as the men knew it, and the enemy had arrived, uh, and then passed over these operational bases, the men would have been literally entombed below as the enemy passed through. For this purpose, the operational bases that we've discovered, to accommodate at any one stage about 3,600 men, with a roughly six in each, so we're talking in the areas of the country vulnerable to invasion of some 600 of operational bases of this type, not always the same, but of this type, then the men would have been required to prepare themselves by day to attack a target by night. They were expected, because of their special training and special skills in local knowledge, to be able to operate silently and secretly in their own locality, carry out an operation each night against the enemy, which was essentially would be using explosives to blow up his supplies and his reserves and his tanks and his aircraft, and then return hopefully to the safety of this operational base by day. During day they would rest, they would review their explosives and their firearms, they would make a decision on which target to attack that night, and then were prepared to go out once night had fallen. And the auxiliaries themselves were not in any doubt that this was a do or die mission. Most of the auxiliary unit's hides were supposed to have been destroyed at the end of the war, and they certainly weren't uh, designed to last tens or twenties or thirties of years, but quite a lot of them have survived. Uh, Sussex has a, a quite a good survival rate, and I've visited many of the auxiliary hides uh, in Sussex, and three or four of them still exist in a, in a fairly good state of preservation, with wooden bunks, uh, with uh, basic furniture, uh, ventilation, and uh, often a tin line shaft uh, that you can just about get into. Uh, I can remember one I went into where the sides had been pushed in uh, and I'm a little bit of a porky person and I got absolutely stuck trying to get into the auxiliary hide. Uh, I made the mistake of going on my own without telling anyone I was there and I was stuck in that shaft for five hours. 
before someone came along and hauled me out. Uh, quite a frightening experience, I can tell you.